Hello! When you start playing Fallout 76, you'll often see people running around with so much radiation that they're almost ghouls. You might even feel pity for the poor sods and wonder if radaways are so scarce that people can't find them. But don't, they know exactly what they're doing. In fact, it's one of the most powerful ways to play the game. If you played Fallout 4, you should be familiar with bloody weapons and unyielding armor. They give you extra damage and extra attributes if you have low health. Normally you want as much health as possible, so most people wouldn't abuse them. Sure, you get more buffs, but you die more easily and unless you're safe scumming, you can lose a lot of progress. I know that I didn't bother with them because the benefits weren't big enough to bother with. But things are different in Fallout 76. The biggest difference is that dying isn't penalized in the online game. Sure, you lose your junk, but you can pick it up again, and even if you die again before you pick it up and lose it permanently, it's no big deal. It's just junk, and you can always get more. Perks and mutations are also new features in the online game that you can take advantage of to make you very tanky. So even at low health, you're durable enough to play. This is what really tips the balance towards bloody builds. So the cost is dying, which is a bit of an inconvenience, but the benefits are enormous, and many people think that they outweigh the cost. One of the key benefits is that you can get a massive boost to your attributes if you have a full unyielding armor set. 5 pieces means plus 15 to all attributes at 20% or less health. There's nothing wrong with trying a low health build without it, but I recommend waiting until you've rolled a full unyielding set. You'll probably have to wait a long time to get them randomly, but it's more likely that you'll have to spend script to roll them. So ideally you want to wait until you have access to top tier armor. So we're looking at Boss Reckon, Secret Service Armor, or Covert Ops Scout Armor. Go for Boss Reckon Armor if you want more protection against bullets, Secret Service if you want more balance protection, or Covert Ops if you want more stealth. You can get the plans for the Covert Scout and Boss Reckon Armor from Daily Ops, but you can also buy the plans for all the armor types from Vault 79 or Minerva. I'm sure you got the hint by now, but it's a good idea to wait until you've got access to endgame gear before trying a low health build. It's almost impossible to get exactly the 3 legendary properties you want, but even going for 2 properties is very very difficult. I've been going for a full sentinel set for the extra damage reduction for a while now, but I still haven't come close. So don't bother trying for anything more than just the unyielding legendary property at first. Once you've got a full unyielding set, you can try and roll for the second or third property you want. But regardless of how you do it, once you've got a set, you can probably try out the style. What's the best way to keep your health low? The answer is radiation. Just like in Fallout 4, if you get irradiated enough, you limit how much health you can have. But how much is enough? The ideal is just under 20%. That enables all the perks that activate at low health and gives you the maximum attribute boost from your unyielding armor. How exactly you get your radiation up is up to you, but a common way is to use a radiation gun and shoot at your own feet. Equip the starch genes perk to avoid gaining or losing mutations and fire away until you get below 20%. You can also eat bad foods and drink bad water. I personally carry a bunch of cooked food for the boost and a lot of it rots before I need to eat it. So I can eat rotten meat and vegetables to fine tune my radiation level to just under 20%. Another way is to go to places like Emmett Mountain, where radiation rumble happens, and use the decontamination showers and the radiation barrels to remove and get radiation. But you can do it however you want. Perks and mutations make a huge difference to surviving as a low health character. In the single player games, it was all about your armor and other gear. But in the online game, if you choose the right perks, you can be pretty tanky even if you're naked. So what are these perks? Serendipity under luck is the best one. At level 3, you straight up avoid 45% of all hits if your health is low enough. It's not 45% less damage, it's a 45% chance to take 0 damage. Ricochet under luck is a straight 18% chance to reflect some damage back at enemies. The enemy takes 25% of their own weapon's damage, but the important thing is that you avoid that 25% damage. This perk also has the hidden benefit of taking advantage of your weapon's properties. So if you're carrying a vampiric weapon, you get healed when this perk triggers. Dodgy under agility reduces all incoming damage by 30% by sacrificing action points. You should pair it up with action boy to recover AP faster, 
and you should also carry AP boosting foods like nuka candies or popcorn that you can spam when your AP gets low. These three add up to a lot of tankiness and you should be using dodgy and ricochet even if you're playing at full health. I would recommend against Lone Wanderer despite the 20% damage reduction it gives you because it's better to use mutations and be part of teams. There's also a bunch of perks that give you damage and energy resistance if you're not in power armor. I covered them in part 3 of the how to get powerful video but it's better to get endgame armor instead. You can still use them if you've got spare perks but because resistance has diminishing returns it's not likely to benefit you much. On the offensive side, Nerd Rage gives you a 20% boost to damage plus a boost to AP regeneration. You also get an extra 40 damage resistance, but if you're wearing good armor, the bonus is not that important. The one mutation you must get if you play at low health is Adrenal Reaction. It gives you up to 50% damage bonus if you're at 20% health or less. And combined with a good weapon and damage boosting perks, it makes a noticeable difference to how quickly you kill enemies. Basically, you can skip damage boosting perks and still do a lot of damage if you have this mutation and a good weapon. Of course, you also want to pack as many other useful mutations as you can, especially the mass tabs I talked about in part 4 of the How to Get Powerful guide. Glass cannons are all about hitting hard at the cost of being fragile. But as I said before, you're not that fragile if you pick the right perks. So let's do a test in West Tech. First, we'll test at low health. I've activated Serendipity and Ricochet, Action Girl for the AP Refresh, and Dodgy. Nerd Rage will be active, so we get an extra 40 damage resistance, but it's not really making much difference. The Super Mutants are level 100, and you can see that at low health, Serendipity really shows its value. With all the perks, even if the bullets hit, they only hit for a few points of damage. But melee is still an issue, so let me add Blocker so we can focus on the gun damage. Basically, unless you get swarmed by enemies, the perks keep you alive long enough for you to heal whatever damage you take. So as long as you're paying attention, it's very viable to play at low health. If you're at full health, you can basically tank multiple enemies for a long time with the perks I mentioned. But you do take a lot of damage from melee enemies, and my testing of the changes for July in the public test server suggested that the melee damage of enemies like mutant hounds will get worse. So expect Blocker to be mandatory in the future. What about damage though? To show just how much more damage you can do, let me use a bloody gorse rifle. All the same cards, plus 9 ranks of rifleman cards. That's 1400 damage for a bat's critical headshot. 880 for a normal headshot, but with full charge. A normal headshot on a mutant hound is about 330 and similar with a normal uncharged headshot on a super mutant. But let's compare using an anti-armor plasma caster. The only difference in damage is purely from adrenal reaction and nerd rage. No damage boosting heavy weapons cards. A hip fire shot on a mutant hound is 330 damage. A bat's headshot on a super mutant is 350 to 400 damage. And the critical is 700 to 900. Keep in mind that the adrenal reaction is increasing damage as I lose health. Now at less than 20% health. That's 500 to 700 for a normal VATS headshot. And 1000 to 1200 damage for a headshot critical. The difference is enormous. It should be pretty obvious that the upside is pretty large. But the downsides are much smaller than you might think if you use the right perks. Yes, you will die more often. But not as much as you might have if you did the same in Fallout 4. But the benefits of a low health build are more than just doing more damage. A full unyielding set will give you massive attribute bonuses. More strength means more melee damage and carrying capacity. My carrying capacity is over 600 and 40 strength means a 200% damage boost to melee weapons. More perception means more accuracy in VATS. You rarely miss shots. Endurance gives you more health and action points. I usually have 492 action points on my low health character. Charisma helps with getting more caps by selling. Intelligence means more experience. At 40 intelligence, that's an 80% bonus to experience. Agility makes you stealthier and gives you a boost to action points. I can stay hidden from enemies even if I'm right in front of them. Luck makes you get more criticals. We're talking about almost every second shot being a critical. 
you're just more effective in combat in every way. If we target that turret, the chance to hit is 90% at low health. At full health, that drops to 67%. It takes 3 hits to kill the turret. At low health, it takes 2 shots. And we get a critical almost immediately. Sometimes there are situations, especially mutated daily ops, where you need extra protection. That's when you can pull out your power armor set. Unfortunately, there's no unyielding legendaries for power armor, so you have to sacrifice your unyielding attribute bonuses. But instead, you get a massive damage reduction boost. There's an inherent 40% damage reduction that you get just for wearing the power armor frame. There's also the emergency protocols mod that gives you another 50% damage reduction if you're at low health. That makes you pretty tanky, and it's only daily ops with mutations that bypass armor that you're in any real risk of dying in a few hits. On top of that, you can also get a full set of Overeater's legendary pieces for an extra 24% damage reduction. Even better if you also manage to get the Sentinel's property too. So it is a good idea to carry a power armor set with you that you can pull out for daily ops and the more dangerous events. The combination of more damage, more accuracy and more criticals makes an enormous difference to how effective you're in combat. Much more than you might think from just looking at the war damage numbers. The cost is dying a bit more and having to manage your radiation, but you rarely die in normal play or public events. I tend to die the most in daily ops or when I'm just not paying attention, but the benefits are just too good. So that's why people use bloody builds. And if you do the things I've mentioned in this video, you too can try out a low health build and see if you like it. Thanks for watching all the way to the end. Let me know what you thought about it in the comments. Feel free to leave a like, subscribe and hit the bell button to be notified when new videos come out. See you soon.